This episode has been brought to you by our super generous supporters on Patreon. We're just a few years away from running out of one of our most important and rarest natural resources. And it's not oil or coal or rainforests or children or Wheezy Waiter videos. There'll be plenty of Wheezy Waiter videos. Hopefully. I'm talking about helium. Helium is the second most abundant element in the universe, but it's extremely rare here on Earth. And it's not just for party balloons and making your voice sound funny. I can do it without helium. See, stop using helium. Helium is a crucial component to a whole range of medical devices and scientific instruments, from MRIs to rocket fuel to the Large Hadron Collider. And it's important enough that the US has a national helium reserve, but it could all be gone by 2020. Good Stuff producer Matt Weber tells the story of helium, how its accidental discovery here on Earth made groundbreaking science scientific discovery possible, and how it could all be going away soon. One night in 1903, the residents of Dexter, Kansas, prepared to turn a geyser of natural gas that had been erupting out of the ground into a towering pillar of fire as big and bright as their economic future. They had just stumbled upon a large reservoir of natural gas underneath their tiny agrarian community. The imminent arrival of industry and investment seemed a virtual certainty. So in celebration of their newfound prosperity, the residents of Dexter decided to set their discovery on fire. Natural gas is largely methane, and methane burns readily. So setting it ablaze should have been easy. But when they tried to light the gas, nothing happened. It stubbornly refused to burn. Whatever was shooting out of the ground in Dexter, Kansas wasn't methane. It was something rarely seen on Earth, helium. Evidence for helium's existence was first identified in 1868 by French astronomer Jules Janssen. While observing the sun during a solar eclipse, he found a bright yellow line in the spectrum of the sun's chromosphere that didn't quite align with any known element. That same year, English scientist Norman Lockyer saw the same yellow spectral line while taking advantage of London's thick smog to measure the sun's solar spectrum. He surmised that it was a new element found only on the sun, and he named it helium after the Greek word for sun, helios. In the next couple of decades, helium would be found emanating from certain rocks and even volcanic eruptions, but only in small amounts. The vast reserves of this element seemed to be limited to the surface of the sun. A sample of the non-flammable gas found outside Dexter was sent to the chemist Hamilton Cady at the University of Kansas. There he found the sample contained a significant amount of an unknown inert gas. Using a spectroscope, Cady saw, much to his surprise, the same bright yellow spectral line that Janssen and Lockyer saw decades earlier on the surface of the sun, meaning the gas had to be helium, which suggested there was a massive store of helium below the town of Dexter, Kansas, the first of its kind ever found on Earth. As was observed a few decades before the discovery of the Dexter helium pocket, certain kinds of rocks emit helium through radioactive decay. Most of this helium just floats away into outer space because it is lighter than the surrounding air. But under the right circumstances, helium can become trapped underground. While the Dexter helium pocket was an important scientific discovery, there was no known practical use for the gas at the time. So the residents of Dexter would never see the fantastic riches that they had hoped for. But just a decade later, helium would become of strategic importance to the US military. Military. World War I was in full swing, and for the first time in military history, the sky had become a theater of war. Blimps were a crucial military tool, carrying out reconnaissance missions and aerial bombing raids from the relative security of the air. And blimps needed helium. You could use hydrogen, which is much more plentiful, but it wasn't as safe. It's highly combustible, as the Hindenburg disaster would tragically demonstrate decades later. On the other hand, helium is inert. It's a noble gas, which means it doesn't react with any other elements. And like the residents of Dexter, Kansas discovered, it doesn't burn. While helium is rare on Earth, in a stroke of good luck for the US military, large quantities of the gas just happened to exist underneath the Great Plains of North America. So the US began stockpiling helium. In 1925, the National Helium Reserve was a established, and the U.S. soon became the world's number one supplier of helium. In fact, the U.S. held a virtual monopoly over the gas, but it's not just good for airships and blimps. During the space race in the 1950s, liquid helium became crucial to the production of rocket fuel, and by 1965, the U.S. was using more helium than ever before. Today, its most common use isn't in airships or party balloons, but to cool superconducting magnets in MRI scanners and other medical and scientific instruments, including the largest machine in the world, the Large Hadron Collider. First launched in 2008, the Large Hadron Collider is a particle accelerator, the most powerful of its kind. It promised to answer some of the biggest questions we have about the universe. What is it made of? How did it begin? And how did we get here? But shortly after it was first activated, a helium leak shut down the Large Hadron Collider for months. The gigantic superconducting magnets that make the particle accelerator possible depended on supercooled liquid helium to function. Without helium, the Large Hadron Collider is useless, and we are running out of it. Helium is non-renewable. 
It can't be synthesized through any practical methods, so all the helium that escapes into outer space is helium that can never be recovered. The National Helium Reserve is expected to be exhausted by 2020, but that's by design. The Helium Privatization Act of 1996 mandated that the reserve be sold off. So in the intervening decades, the US has been flooding the market with cheap helium. This has discouraged active exploration for new helium deposits, because if you can get helium so readily from the reserve, there's no reason to go out and drill for it. But in the last few years, as the reserve is depleted, the price of helium has been rising. This has caused many scientists who depend on the gas for their research to begin recapturing and recycling the gas, or abandon their work entirely. But all is not lost. There could be more helium deposits, we just haven't been looking hard enough. Just last year, a team of British researchers ventured deep into the Tanzanian Rift Valley to investigate a hunch. Ever since the accidental discovery of helium outside Dexter, Kansas, all the helium we've ever found has been by accident, or just a byproduct of natural gas exploration. But you should be able to find helium deposits on purpose by searching for the right conditions in the Earth's crust. And that's exactly what these researchers did. In the East African Rift, seismic forces have been pulling the Earth's crust apart for millions of years. The intense heat generated by this tectonic activity fosters the release of helium in the ancient molten rock. If their estimates are correct, it could contain twice the amount of helium stored in the National Helium Reserve and keep our MRIs and particle accelerators supplied for years to come. But the exact amount of helium is hidden within the Earth, and we won't know exactly how much we have left until we start drilling. And the long-term environmental impacts of large-scale helium mining are poorly understood. But rising helium prices will only make the active exploration and exploitation of new helium deposits an increasingly lucrative venture, for better or worse. Helium has been here since the very beginning of our universe. It was forged in the first few minutes of the Big Bang in the same energy soup that gave birth to everything we see today. As a consequence, its bright yellow spectral line can be seen all across the cosmos. Yet here on Earth, helium is rare and valuable, and will remain so for the foreseeable future. But unlike other non-renewable resources, much of its worth comes from its scientific importance. Not only do its unique properties allow us to venture into space, they also let us peer inside of our bodies and into the very building blocks of the universe. That knowledge, the discovery that helium makes possible, is what makes it so invaluable. So what do you think? Will new helium discoveries be enough to keep the Large Hadron Collider running? Will we have to find an alternative? Will we have to ban kids' birthday parties and never talk funny again? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video so that others may accidentally discover it. Special thank you to our Patreon subscribers for making this episode of The Good Stuff possible. Without Patreon, The Good Stuff just wouldn't exist. So, if you want to make our future as bright as a flaming pillar of methane, my band name in high school, head on over to our Patreon page and support the show. Thanks for watching.